Welcome back to Dark Souls 2 lore through everyone. We are going to do a loose ends video today, so I'm going to try to at least get as much as I can in before we uh, go to the castle. I'm just going to go from the top and uh, go down. Um, of course this will involve me thinking a lot of, did we get everything here? Um, I do want to check and see if there's a seed of the Tree of Giants that has sprouted. Again, I don't know the trigger for it, especially in this game. Um, but let's, uh, let's try to see if we can grab it. Oh, there it is. Cool. A lump of something, which is, I think, what it says this is. Huh. Some, uh, maybe I just remember this. A lump of something, obtainable from a giant tree, makes enemies react to invaders. When the giants fell, they grew into great trees. Death is not the end. For anything that has ever once lived remains a part of a great cycle of regeneration. But what of those outside of the cycle? Wow. I feel like that uncharacteristically opened that up uh, a lot. Uh, yeah, we want to go... Like, who in this would have ever been described as out of the cycle? I mean, we've, we've only known that everything restarts over and over and over again. And that old things become new things. How would anything be out of that cycle? Anyway, so we have gotten the uh, token of fidelity, which we happen to get from finding it, but we could have gotten it by, uh, uh, by uh, I guess, being summoned for a boss or something. I don't know. Um, so now we can talk to... Uh, oh, God, what is his name? Transient being. You have obtained proof you are worthy of joining our order. You may call yourself one of us, and are free to plant your roots in this garden of the gods. Be proud. Targray. I, Targray, do proclaim from this day, you are a knight of the blue. Rejoice, and bask in your new honor. Yes. You are no longer a mere vagabond. You are now a guardian, a knight of the blue. Proud knight, take this. Wear this ring and shine light upon stone. Light then upon stone. you will hear the voices of the blue apostles. Listen for their cries of help, and repel the malicious invaders. This is the proud work of the Knights of the Blue. The way they elevate themselves to a higher plane. I'll provide what you need. You may visit me at any time. Proud Knight, you may come to me, Targray, for help. So, yeah, I mean, it's very similar to the Blaze of the Dark Moon. However, I feel like this kind of, the way the Covenant works in Dark Souls 2 is still pretty cool. It's, I think it's, I think I prefer it to what's going on with the Blaze of the Dark Moon. Because, like, you'll have the people that start out the game just, you know, join the first Covenant after talking to the guy, and they'll need the most help. You need to get into this Covenant once you actually know what you're doing in the game and have traveled far places. Um, and, you know, we, and, and then all you need to do is if those people are being invaded, you can um, help them out by trying to kill their invaders. Whereas the Blades of the Dark Moon has to do with sin and finding people that have sinned, and so you're just in, you're just 
invading, but different types of people than if you were in the Cod's Covenant. I don't know, I think this is a very unique uh, spin on the whole thing. Uh, so he has these, which I think we've read these. If, if not, wait, they're not that interesting. So yeah, he is very... Um, Uh, all the I think all the stones say the same thing, and we've read that. Um, just talk about Melfian Academy. Um, he has very clericky stuff, and of course he has this heavenly thunder, which I think we read. Um, scholars bicker over whether this is the original lightning spirit or a derivative. Well, we now have one of the originals. There's actually multiple in Dark Souls One too. We knights of the blue must rely upon one another to achieve our greater goal. Present your token of fidelity to test your strength against other knights. So yeah, I guess, the, yeah, it's not summoning you get one. I guess, yeah, you need to find one in the world to join. And then once you've now invaded and helped someone, you get a token of fidelity. And then you can present that to the duel so that you can fight each other. It's it, this is part it's a little convoluted, I will have to say. Proud knight, aim high in all things. We knights must protect the apostles of blue. Never forget this fact, and by your honor, never eschew your training. There are others in this forsaken place who have only a lust for blood. They conspire to ambush blue apostles on the road. Knight of the Blue, protect our apostles from these bloodthirsty brigands. Take pride in your duty as a blue knight. Work hard and pursue a higher plane. Yeah, so he's telling us about the other covenant, which is conveniently located in... I'll uh, invent. Is it invent? No, it's an alchem. Sorry, yeah, that's true. So here we have in the first area before Ven, we have the Knights of the Blue, or the Blue Sentinels, and then in the first area of the of Alkin, you have the uh, whatever the I can't remember their name. Something like Blood, whatever. The other rivaling uh, covenant, and we know that Alcan and Van rivaled with each other, and so I think this is a nice touch that they have, you know, two covenants that essentially are constantly at war with each other, and that will never end. <laughs> we knights of the blue must rely upon one another. Present your token to t do your work, and I will lend you strength. So yeah, um, because we have that token, we can then. And now that we're in the covenant, we can offer it to these statues and do a duel. Um, also, we got that ring. We're getting quite a few of these. Join this covenant, wear this ring to be automatically summoned to the world of the blue apostles who have been invaded by dark spirits. The ring is engraved with the crest of the Way of Blue, symbolizing the dignified oath. So, yeah. That's all we're going to be doing with the, uh, the Blue Covenant. Um, we cleared this out. We have more things that we could talk to Strayed about, and I might do that actually, but I might do that with Ornifex like at the very end. Um, we don't have any new items to get here. Yeah, we're fine. Fine there, so... Well, now we're just gonna go to the other Covenant. At least I hope we are going to. <laughs> I could, uh, end up, uh... Dying a few times here, I guess. Although I'm much more powerful.
So yeah, we never went up this way. Okay, we can't kill these guys in one hit, but that's fine. Oops. Um, but yeah, we're going to go across that bridge up to this Colosseum thing up here. There's a bit of a gauntlet on the way there. Oh, there's more of these guys. And they drop crack red eye orbs. I guess they're meant to kind of be like the dark rays. Um, there's the notched whip. Um, but yeah, we're by the covenant that uses cracked red eye orbs, so I guess it makes sense. A whip covered in spikes shreds skin and causes bleeding. Very effective against bare flesh, but not armor. Um, so yeah, I don't know if this is any different. I just summon these guys one at a time. And can't I hit these guys on the ground? I hit that one guy on the ground, so I thought maybe... Oh yeah, so is there an extra guy? Is that the thing here? Um, well, I guess we're gonna want to. It's interesting. Whoops, <laughs> ran out of stamina. It's really weird. <laughs> Kick animation. So yeah, it looks like there's an extra guy up there that we had killed earlier. Um, yeah. Um, we'll just do this for now. And let's try to grab some of these guys. Oh wow. Oh interesting, you can pull and then release. That's cool. Wow. <laughs> That's pretty unnecessary. Parium. Okay, so apparently aim right at them. Wow, that's crazy. That your uh, arrows fly so straight. Yeah, I don't know if you can parry the whip. I'm sure you can, but. Like these uh, skeletons on the poles. I don't think those were there before. I'll try pairing the whip one more time. Yeah, I mean, if you can, I can't. If, if one can, I am not able to do so. Um, okay. Can't remember if there's more of those guys. Um, so yeah, we can hear the bonfire below us. Let's see that area that we went through before. Now we're crossing the bridge. You can fall off, 
And actually, it is an idea to get down to this area if you wanted to go on here. Ooh! Cheeky little surprise guy here. Just prevents you from, uh... from uh, running through here, I guess. Which is, I guess, good and bad. There's a lot of these guys. Um, how do I... How do I trigger him? There we go. Undead Purgatory. I still have that stupid item there. Okay. Don't know if you can parry this guy. It's a little bit lucky. Unlucky. Oh. <laughs> Sometimes I'm glad I'm recording these. Um, gosh, what is this? Oh, God. Every time. Well, I hope you enjoyed that section. Because we're going to do it again. Uh, I can't remember what that item is. I mean, I remember it not being all that important. I wish they had a shortcut up there so that you could go from here straight up there and skip all those guys. That would be, like, a good shortcut. Because this is just a... like a pointless area to go through. I guess I don't need to get all of these guys dead. I'm just thinking that, you know, if I run up here, all these guys are gonna just pile up and uh, then I'll be stuck fighting them all in a small area rather than a large area. Oh, boy. Okay, so if it's just this guy, I'm good. Oh, great. Did that kill him, though? That's nice. Can I parry this guy? I don't want to try with the second guy. Oh, god, he's... Okay. Okay, don't mean that. Parry this guy. Ooh, that takes away all of your stamina. That would have killed me. Or that should have killed me. scared of triggering more than one of these guys at once. Well, that's kind of bogus. Ugh. I'm trying to parry this guy.
jumps very high. Oops. So I've killed this guy, so now I feel more comfortable about just running up. And if these guys chase me, I can just handle them once I'm up here. Because this guy's dead. Hmm. Uh, yeah, so I'm not getting that. I don't know, who knows, it's probably a fire seed or something, but I, it's something valuable, but I'm not gonna... See if I can make it. No. So, yeah, the key to this fight is to take out this guy. Um, because he revives these skeletons. If there's any more, but actually, I'm gonna go back to my initial setup. And then, yeah, you come up here, you pull this gate. And it crashes gloriously. And what's cool is that you fight the course, not the executioner. Oh, wow. Okay. It's got a dark attack that I don't want to encounter right now. There it is. Oh, I'm not in power stance, that's why. There we go. There we go. I was like, what's going on? Ooh. So yeah, a um, couple things to say about this fight. Um, one is that there might be a few uh, skeletons over here. Um, one is that that's not the only way to kill it, which is kind of interesting. You can uh, attack it enough from the sides, or maybe it's hitting it just at the right time here, I can't even remember. But 
Oh, there's a midsection there now. <laughs> it used to kind of just fly across this turn. But anyway, you heard it enough. And like Sif, I guess, it it doesn't have enough energy to make it across the gap. So it will kind of fall on the edge and then hold, you know, hold on for its dear life, looking very pathetic. I mean, and, you know, I mean, it's terribly sad. <laughs> To see a horse struggling like that, it really, like, you're like, oh. Um, and then you can hit it off. I elect for, I think this is the way you're meant to do it. It certainly is a, uh, an interesting fight. Um, where is the executioner? There he is. So, yeah, it's interesting that the executioner himself <laughs> dies. Just... Just completely dies when they hit the thing there. And uh, let's read the soul and see what it says. Otherwise, I will say the second thing I was going to say. Soul of the Executioner's Chariot that holds control over the undead purgatory. The chariot was created only to, tor to torment undead, and it took the form of a horrendous mad steed, a window into the soul of its master. So, yeah, that's what I was going to say, that basically, um, in Ven, they use the Flexile Sentry uh, to torture the undead in the ships as they were being shipped back and forth, and in some cases shipped, you know, deep, very, very far south. Um, in Elkin, they do something a little different. They put them in this big coliseum and um, and have a executioner's chariot run over them over and over and over again. Very interesting. That they are mirrored a little bit. So now we can see here that we are at um, this is now the uh, this is the undead purgatory but this is where we find the other covenant and you can see that similar to the Knights of the Blue, or the Blue Sentinels, they have similar um, statues here, which you can fight with just the same way. And you can see this guy. I love this little particle effect. It's cool. And there's blood splattered behind him because it's a covenant of blood. And he he has what looks like Eileen the Crow's outfit from <coughs> excuse me Bloodborne. Anyway, last I played this, they had a bad uh, voice actor for this guy, so hopefully it's not the same guy. Oh, welcome, welcome. Do you have a lust for blood? It is the same guy. Sure. Yes, of course. Why else would you be here? That voice doesn't fit that. Do you give yourself the Nar Alma? Model to me. I think we saw a little bit about Nar Alma before. Maybe not. But anyway, uh, the god that these guys pray to is Nar Alma. Then you will need blood. Oh, lots of it. Undead blood. Like your own. It's not as easy as you think. Oh. <laughs> well, let me say. Brotherhood of Blood. Join the Brotherhood of Blood. That's easy to remember. Hmm. That can hardly be the whole story. I want to hear what you really think. You want more than just a little blood. You want to be drenched in blood, mired in its foul stench. Am I right? Am I? Oh, just say that I'm right. Huh? <laughs> this guy doesn't have a face. Um, 
Yeah, so this might be a tribute to Bloodborne, actually, just because these were being developed around the same time, and the stench of blood, mired in blood, and the fact that he's wearing a, a reminiscent article, I don't know, might be a little bit of a nod there, a little bit of a crossover. Um, but yeah, I, he has no face, so I don't really know what this thing is. <laughs> but... I knew. I knew. <laughs> Fantastic. You're the best. Now you are a servant of Nahala. I can see you go both ways. Like his voice of blood is yours. His voice acting is so weird that it almost works. There. Another servant of blood is born. You will serve well. I just know you will. Or is she? I don't know. <laughs> well, how are we? Uh, I was going to mention. You need, I've got it for you. The reason that we could join is because we had the token of um, that other token. I can't remember. His name is Titchy Gren, by the way, um, and he's got lots of items. Uh, but yeah, just the same way with the blue sentinels, we need to kind of get a token in order to come and back and do this. That's why I wanted to wait for these, so we could just do it all in one go. So, Great Scythe and the Priest Chime, we saw that. And then we have the Bones set, which is kind of cool. Skeleton Lord Crown. The Old Iron King led his best men on undead hunts, but their memories were purged in rebirth. <laughs> so, yeah. Bone King, I, I guess, not the Skeleton Kings, but maybe? I don't know. And then he has this interesting, delicate string. A soft string-like ring tied around the finger makes it easier for invaders to find your world. Who would create such a ring and why? Perhaps the answer is better left unknown. Well, if you were trying to get blood, you would want people to come to you. And all the fantastic tools that you would use as a Brotherhood of Blood an urn, something to transform and blend into the environment, the red sign soapstone, and some cracked eye orbs, of course. Be some oh, token of spite. Be summoned to another world as a dark spirit. Defeat the summoner to acquire a token of spite. Some undead persevere along the honorable path even after crossing into the dark. And some pyromancies. Um, the firestorm is said to be the wrath and ire of the spell's creator. Um, we know that uh, firestorm was Koilana's, but she was mimicking something that they did to fight the, the dragons. Great combustion and fire whip. One of the original pyromancies. Effective use of it demands agile footwork, making it a difficult spell for most. So yeah, this is one of the advanced sources of Quilana. Obviously, there's the Chaos Fire Whip, which the other daughter of Chaos, who is known as Grana or whatever, that we fight right before the bed of Chaos. She was using the Chaos Fire Whip, and of course, that's where you find it. You know anything about tokens of spite? Well, you can fight other blood servants with them. I'll reward you if you win with red orbs. You know, a cracked red eye orb. Use it to visit other worlds and seek more blood. Tell me if you need anything else. I'm very generous. Anything to get you covered in blood. Yeah, a little bit more explicit here how it works, but yeah, you go get tokens of spite with with cracked red orbs, cracked red eye orbs, and then you get tokens of spite. You use those to battle in these ba journey in these battle arenas, and then you get more cracked red eye orbs. I don't know, it's a little weird. Have you heard of the blue sentinels? Yes. They're a thorn in our sides, to say the least. Their men are obsessed with hunting down blood servants. <laughs> Who cares? It's just another chance to spill more blood. Doesn't that excite you? Hmm? <laughs> Titchy Grin's 
way more well uh, uh, suited for this duel, this battle. <laughs> uh, Targray seemed very concerned about these guys, and he doesn't care at all. He's like, oh, just more people to kill. Do you know anything about tokens or spot? Yeah, tell me if you thirsting for blood. So yeah, you can join some duels here. All right, let's keep it going. Um, don't think there was anything left there. I could go back and get some of the items in the poison here, but that's not exactly what I mean by coming back around. I just want to do loose ends. Ah. Uh, there is a loose end I want to check out. Um, is there anything in here that we can do? No. There's one thing, but not yet. Um, we did that. Oh. There we go. Sorry, I, uh, <laughs> I haven't really planned this out, so you just have to watch me think for a little bit. Um... Yeah, so I kind of avoided uh, Oh yeah, you can't lock onto these guys. So I avoided a Dark Diver Grandel Grendel <laughs> Um when I first came through here. I actually don't know why. I suppose it would have made sense to just meet him, and then, and then we would have had the second meeting in the in the Black Gulch. So, but that's what I did. So, Soul Mass, we've read that before. It's one of Logan's sorceries. Young undead, don't let this curse weigh upon you. We meet a second time. Perhaps you will yet traverse the dark. Young undead, if you truly seek the dark, then we will surely meet again. May we meet it? So yeah. All right, let's see here. All right. Huh, is this guy, oh no, no, he usually comes up here, yeah, yeah. Apparently he's going in there. All right. Well, that was easy. Um, yeah, let us uh, fight this boss. So yeah, this is in the Doors of Pharaohs, which I did off camera. Um, but yeah, basically, there's all these traps around here that you can use ferrous lock stones in. Um, and then, you know, they like shoot things. They put, there's one where you can put up a wall here so that, you know, when people come and you draw people to your world and then they're going to want to try to get through to this area. So there's obviously a shortcut right here but you can make it so they have to go all the way around and they have to face all the people, so. And obviously, Doors of Pharos, we've heard a lot about Pharos, so. Just another area of his. Um, I'm not great at this fight, uh, just because of it's like the Capra Demon effect. But, um, let's try it. 
Maybe they've changed it. And toxic. Does this go get rid of toxic? Oh, you're not toxic for very long. Okay, good. Yeah, so this obviously meant to evoke Seath, although this says Royal Rat Authority. Doesn't have the same impact as Sif, who is, <laughs> you know, Artorius' like faithful companion and pet. Also, not as hard of a fight. I mean, once you get the. I guess the big change they made was that they uh, made it so the Toxic lasted for a second, which definitely helps. But yeah, I don't know if he's a dog or a big rat. Ooh, that's got a large hit frames. We get another rat tail and we get the royal rat authority soul. These guys drop life gems. So there's this cool area up here. I wish I knew more or it had more meaning. What this hall would have been used for. I mean, I, I just in general love the rock in this area. Because the Pharaoh's lockstone is probably all made from this because it kind of has that shape. Like, it's all like jetty rock. All right, so let's read this. Soul of the Royal Rat Authority of the Underground Realm. Those who chose, choose to serve the Rat King must have the courage to face his challenges. So, not much said there. And when we go through here, we will... Um, we will meet the Rat King, the same one, I believe. So I guess there must be some connection uh, underground um, between um, here and Majula, or, you know, the Grave of Saints. It's kind of a cool idea. But I wish, like, that would be cool if, like, we could somehow go and... Yeah, he looks like the same model. But it'd be cool if we could go and, like, travel that ourselves and we just a cool little thing why comest thou here human thy treason will not go unpunished be gone I will gaze upon thee no longer um sure maybe he says something different or sells something different here I don't know we're not really doing I covenants do speak thy mind um, same stuff. My servant. Yeah. There has been much honor in. I am merciful. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's give him the last rat tail we have. Because I don't want it. My servant. Do. Okay. We'll probably end up killing him. Um, and then we come down this area. Might as well try to get some chunks here. Large, large, large Titanite. Am I wearing? Oops. Yeah. No chunks today. Alright. <clears throat> what else do we have here? Oh, yes, we have the door here. Yeah, I think that's it. I mean, there's items I missed, of course, but. Who cares about that?
Interesting, he doesn't come out of the ground. Yeah, here's the thing, the weird colored um, crystal lizard that blows up. I thought he was going to blow up when I walked close to him, but nope. Drop something. Interesting. Okay, I'm gonna start thinking about healing. I wonder why there's a sconce here. we could try to get these items here just because I've never done it. This stuff hurts you, but you know, just mildly so. Ooh! It's more shocking than anything else. Oh, and a stupid torch. Oh, and all of a sudden they're getting hurt when they weren't hurt before. That's good. Interesting, these doors stay open. Maybe they did in the original, never mind. This is the door that we uh, wanted to open. Um, hopefully nothing else comes in chases after us. I wonder where... Vengar is. Okay, so here's my guess here. I still might be right, but, um, so last, when I was in that other, um, area where I got the engraved gauntlets, I, um, might as well go human too, um, I saw one of these things that looked like that thing that summoned spiders, and then it, like, spoke. So I'm gonna try to stay closer by, because I think this is gonna be one of those. Nope. Okay. Just a... Um, ambush. Black Knight, Ultra Great Sword. Probably doesn't say anything new. We've read most of these. Right. And let's see if the... Uh, Great fireball. Nope. And the fire suit we've obviously read. Okay. Nothing new. Nothing all that great. Um let us just homeward bone. I think that's the easiest. Ooh, we're coming up on an hour. This is gonna be a long episode. Actually, hopefully we're done with everything, because then we can just... We finished everything here. I mean, there, I have to light all the things. I mean, I don't have to, but... And we did everything here. Yeah, so we're actually good. So this might go a little long, but let's... Um, let's grab all of the... Uh, souls. And let's speak to... To um, horn effects. Oh my gosh. Oh my god. That. It's 
it's the moments that I'm like, oh, I'll just go human real quick, because, you know, I haven't died in an hour. Alright. First things first. Okay, let's stay human this time. Why did that not, like, annihilate all of them? Okay. Get those guys out of the way. Then. Kill this guy. Get in here. Oh, really? This can travel right in. Uh, hopefully... This is just, like, <laughs> unnecessarily annoying. We're just going to read stuff here. She doesn't actually have a ton of stuff. Lost Sinner's Sword. Ultra Great Sword forged from the soul of the Lost Sinner. Its, blades, its blade saps the life of its wielder. The true nature of the sword is unknown, e even to the Lost Sinner herself. Those who choose the sword will share the burden of the Lost Sinner's misdeeds. So, there's also a Chaos Sword in this game, but this is a similar thing. Um, same as Chaos Soul, Isoleth. Or, same as the Chaos Sword. It's, you know, Isoleth connection, obviously. Spider Fang. Curved sword forged from the soul of Duke's dear Freya. Its blade is coated with a sticky silk that is cast with each strong attack. Supposedly, the Duke himself, an eccentric soul fascinated with spiders, went on to take a form that was far from human. So yeah, I didn't really, you know, fully get into that too, but I mean, it seemed that um, the Duke himself became Freya in some manner. <laughs> but now we, we have, you know, multiple stuff. We have the writhing ruin, we have the actual soul, uh, the actual spider, and then we have the duke now, who is all apparently a part of this. Come again, if it please you. Oh my god. How did we do this? What like event happened that made them come over here? Okay. If you All right. So that's an, yeah I don't know that's kind of interesting. An oddly large butcher knife, not your standard weapon, but certainly deadly enough to be utilized as one absorbs the HP of foes. Who in their right mind would create such a thing? Perhaps it is best not to dwell on how it was likely used in the past. It's more chipped and stuff than the ones in um, Dark Souls 1. And obviously we have... Uh, um, oh my god. What's the name of the butcher that invades you? Anyway. She used to be a, uh, a butcher. I mean, again, it made sense in Dark Souls. Like, there was very specifically the Depths, and they had butchers that ate man alive, and... And one of them went down to Blight Town and we fought her. And here it's just a butcher's knife. I guess that was carried along. 
old Iron King soul makes the Iron King hammer. Great hammer forged from the soul of the Iron King. The tip is formed of molten rock. The corpse of the old Iron King became the vessel that bred Icarus Earth. That's interesting. So maybe the corpse is the old Iron King's, but Icarus Earth, I don't know. It's slightly confusing. The heavy rock tip is formed of cooled magma with a still smoldering core. Strong attack releases its inner power. Yeah, I'm not actually sure about that description. The corpse of the old Iron King became the vessel that bred Icarus Earth. I don't know which part of that I'm supposed to take literally. Um, the spear of the knight known as the Dragon Slayer was imbued with the power of lightning and shattered the stone scales of dragons. Strong attack. So apparently this is the Dragon Spear, even though apparently that might not be the old Dragon Slayer. It might not be Einstein himself. I don't know. Come again. All right, let's go to Strayed and read the last of the souls. So is he out here? Do these guys just not move now unless you like approach them? There's even one right by Strayed. What are you supposed to do with this? Okay. Oh! There's an item in here. Huh. It's actually a petrified dragon bone. Well, this is a most peculiar soul. <laughs> very good. Very good indeed. I like how... Unusual souls produce unusual spells. <laughs> Like, you get used to a voice actor from one game, and then they're just like this random character. So yeah, you can see that he wields the sunlight, sunset staff that we found in Brightstone Cove, for some reason. Alright. Trade. Um, man, I don't remember what we already read. That was my problem from coming here in the first place. We'll read them all. Uh, forged by the soul of Mytha, the Baneful Queen. Mytha, Mytha was the fairest queen in the land until something unhinged her. Was it the poison found deep within the earth, or the passion that consumed her heart? Well, we already know the answer to that. That actually is a regressive description. We, are, we know from Gilligan that she loved the king, but the king loved another, the old Iron King. And she poisoned herself in order to become more beautiful to become the object of his desire but maybe it was just that she found poison i don't know uh an ultra great sword forged from the soul of the smelter demon it bears but its blade its blade bears the strength of terrible flames a latent power unleashed by strong attack the earth spouted fire and a beast arose from the flames the short-sighted king was incinerated by the creature in one swing and his castle devoured in a sea of flames. Not sure if this is related to the smelter demon in any way. In other words, a beast arose from the flames. Is that Icarus Earth? The short sighted king, is that the old Iron King? Was incinerated by the creature in one swing. Is that the smelter demon? Is that Icarus Earth? And his castle devoured in a sea of flames. I think it's unintentionally un un vague. Or, like, doesn't help how vague it is. Um, maybe there's a Japanese translation that makes it clearer. Definitely read The Pursuers. Definitely read Warp Sword and the Arc Sword. Giant Stone Sword and the Barbed Club. Wow, so all of these are Flexile Sentry. One, two, three. Oh my gosh. A two pronged spear that imitates a weapon mentioned in an ancient text. Oh, yeah, we read this. Yeah. 
Dragon Rider, we meet we have that. Roaring. Halberd forged from the soul of a skeleton lord, imbued with the power of dark. The unsettling skull carved into this halberd recalls the final moments of the skeleton lord from whom it was created. So apparently uh, he took his own skull and put it on top of his halberd in order to fight with it. Scythe cut forged from the soul of the covetous demon. The curved spine of the covetous demon is as hard as a rock, and rather than slicing through flesh, this weapon seems to grind it apart. The th that thing that ended up as a monstrous fiend, what was it to begin with, and why did it never leave the queen? Perhaps it was entranced by some perversion of love. So we kind of knew a lot about this, that... Whoever the covetous demon was loved the queen, and the queen loved the old iron king, and the king loved another. Maybe he loved the covetous demon. But what, because the demon coveted something, again, demon is used a lot differently than in, in the first one, or in demon souls even. Um, but anyway, he became a covetous demon because he wanted something so badly, which is similar to what happened to Mytha. Chariot Lance. Lance forged from the soul of the Executioner's Chariot. Its cross-shaped blade causes bleeding. The perverse design of the spear mirrors the chariot from which it came, a merciless creation that endlessly tortured the undead. Crossbow created from the soul of the Executioner's Chariot. Iron plate serves as a shield while firing. The merciless chariot inflicted agony upon others with utter impunity, and the crossbow created from its soul strives to protect from possible retribution. So it's a crossbow. It's a crossbow that has a shield on it, so you can fire and just block at the same time. It's cool. And we read everything else. Uh, yeah, we read that. Hurls a large, a huge soul mass which splits into smaller souls that rain from above. Requires real talent and is difficult to handle. Only works in certain places and against certain foes. Um, a fringe pyromancy of unknown origin creates a powerful cloud of poisonness. The poison gradually erodes the target's body, inflicting damage all the while. Whoever created the spell did not believe his enemies deserved a swift death. Um, well, we know Enki created that. I don't know if this is the exact same one, but uh, I don't know if that's exactly why he created it. But And then Acid Search. Does not directly damage foes, but eats away at their equipment instead. Yet another pyromancy inspired by perniciousness. Now, this one, I thought maybe it was created by Engi, but we found it. I think this is the one we found in the um, um, painting of Ariamis. So I don't know how it is linked to anything, but... I, you know, for for better or for worse. You know, for better or for worse, Dark Souls 2 is kind of doing away with some of that stuff. Hey guys, I just realized two things that I didn't show that I wanted to show in my Loose Ends video, so we're just going to tag them on to the end here. Oops, turn my speakers off. Alright, so because I killed the two um, ogres at the beginning, now we can uh, actually talk to Milabeth. You have proven yourself to the forest. We have little to offer, except perhaps these. May they bring fortune to your journey. The old women are sisters. Okay, I heard that. So yeah, she gives you a ladle. He who chooses this as a weapon either faces extenuating circumstances or has an odd sense of humor. If you care for your life, leave this one in the kitchen. And of course there's people that play the game with just the ladle. Alright, um, so yeah, and of course the other thing that I was saying that I was going to be doing forever ago was go to Lost Bastille and go to the place where I need to put in the uh, um, Ferris Lockstone. So, of course, I forgot. We're going to do it now. All right. I got distracted by straight, I say. 
Oh, I forgot that there's all these guys shooting fire arrows. There's a guy over here, I think. Ugh, I didn't even have a chance. I guess I thought it was still on the ground. So we can use the antiquated key to get into this area. And actually, I don't know what I have coming to me. This could be all different. been around here before. Oops. Uh, this should bring in. I hate these guys and I hate bringing this up because then they are always, always here when you come back. So hopefully I won't have to come back. Um, wander, hood, coat, manchettes. Is that just a starting set? They're all fire. That makes sense. Guess I should have gone up here first, no matter what. Okay. The important thing here is to keep these barrels open. Um, let's just try this. There we go. Forgot to do that last time. We get the arch drake robes and shield. I think we've gotten the arch drake staff and stuff. Robes of the arch drake sect in of Lindelt. Little is known about the Archdrake sect and its ancient rituals, and those who dare to indulge their curiosity have been known to simply vanish. The Archdrake sect are the keepers of Lindelt's histories, including the only record of its foundation, a tome they have good reason to keep hidden away. Um, what was it, a shield? Shield of the Archdrake sect in Lindelt. The dragon was engraved for ritual purposes, but the shield itself is highly functional. The secrets of Lindelt rituals are protected by the Archdrake sect, and only a select few are given access to their canon of knowledge, which includes the truthful origins of the Archdrake sect itself. I don't know that that's anything more than just like a colorful history. Um, however, it certainly could. It certainly could be, ooh, shadow mask. It certainly could be uh, like where we find them later might have some impact, but we can talk about that at that point. Used to hide in the cover of night, those who are especially adept assassins are often hired as bodyguards. In an attempt to stave off the curse, King Vendrick hired shadowmen to put down the hollows, but before long they were hollow themselves. So that's actually, it's interesting because I have in the past kind of said that Vendrick was a little bit different, but it seems like he himself also tried to put down the hollows. So yeah, here's that, uh, it might not be the exact same statue, but what I thought was the statue of the guy in, uh, we saw this in the Iron Keep, although without the sword, the sword had fallen. It's, it's, I would love to do, or to, I mean, I'd love to see someone who completely analyzes every statue in this game because I think that could be very valuable. 
Um, or, and I don't know if some of them are just random or not. I, f I assume this is someone important. Um, soul vessel, that's nice. Oh, weird. There used to be two um, that controlled two, I guess. Yeah, they. Just replaced it with a door now. What's this? Okay. And I guess for posterity's sake, I will. I do have 17,000 souls, but I don't know how much. It's not worth much nowadays. But I'm going to attempt to get this item right here. Now that I have the cat ring, it might be a little bit easier. But also, I mean, I often will. What's the best way to get at it here? I think just to walk straight off like this. It is still a bonfire aesthetic. So, what is the idea here? Do we. Oh, we just go down like this. Oh wow, I'm not taking any damage. It's crazy. Um, and then like that. Okay. There, I did it. Um, okay, so anyway, thanks for watching, and we'll pick up with the uh, castle in the next episode. Bye.